Hello folks, welcome back to the screencast. It's about time to start working with a code. So let's refresh our minds of what's going on here. Uh, so we are working on a search functionality and essentially we need a very simple UI controller that has to submit queries and render states. And in order to do that, it will talk to a component that I named searcher here. So the searcher will expose an API to submit queries and also expose something that the UI controller can observe from to render the states. Um, so that's basically the entry point of the whole story here. That's the very outside of our system. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how that's gonna work. And I decided to use the presentation mode uh, for this video. Please let me know if it's gonna be easier for you to follow. And also on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little toast whenever I hit a shortcut on the keyboard. That might be also useful, so please let me know. Let's go ahead and create a new class here. And uh, also a new test inside. So that's going to be our acceptance test. Um, so I would say something like perform search. And what I want to do is here, I want to make sure that um, the states that are rendered by the UI are the same as what I expect them to be. So uh, something like expected that um, rendered states to be the same as UI controller dot rendered states um, let's import this one so that will happen when the UI controller will submit a query and the query will be something like, I don't know, item. So the UA controller submits a query and then I expect it to render some states. Uh, let's define the states first. Um, and I'm thinking to um, start very simple here. I'm gonna use uh, strings. So show coding, then the results. and then hide loading. So I'm using here string, which is a primitive, but I'm gonna deal with the primitive obsession a bit later. For now, I think it's fine, uh, but I really uh, need this order to be there. So I need the order. And finally, let's go ahead and create the UI controller, which is gonna be a property here. I'll name it, make it uh, late in it so I can in initialize it in the uh, before set, uh, before method. Um, so that's going to be a spy UI controller. And it's going to be a class inside here, uh, like a little helper for the test. Now, let's initialize it in the before. Is spy UI controller. And let's create the rendered states. So the rendered states are gonna be um, a mutable list of string. So I'm gonna store the, the states that are going to be rendered. I'm gonna store them in this list. Uh, and that's how I can do the um, assertion later. And it has to have a submit, submit uh, function. And basically, the submit um, function will have to um, push the query to the searcher. So now I'm thinking about the, uh, the communication between the spy and um, uh, the, I mean the UI controller and the searcher. So the UI controller essentially is um, either a fragment or an activity on Android. 
and those APIs are not allowing us to pass contract uh, to pass arguments in the constructors uh, because those are created by um, I mean that's how it works so um, typically what we do is um, we are injecting them um, either by using some um, dependency injection library uh, or something like that and then uh, I want to mimic that out so I would say that the UI controller is a spy UI controller also its searcher is a searcher now this searcher will be a class that I want to that's going to be my production code um, so I'll move it into the production package and move it on, on uh, the other side so we can take a look at it uh, look at both of them in parallel actually and uh, let's also create a member in the spy here um, so that's essentially how we would initialize it um, and then um, we have to we have to be able to uh, first observe the um, uh, the states that the UI controller will be uh, rendering so we are gonna be observing them from the searcher and how we typically do that on Android is like we are setting we are establishing that communication in uh, let's say on create and then on create is a callback that we, we are receiving from the system um, so I want to mimic that out as well so the UI controller will have something like on create and I want to establish the uh, the observing there so let's say uh, searcher dot search live data observe with this and whenever I receive a new state to be rendered I'll store it in the rendered states uh, inside so let's go ahead and create this property and I want to expose a live data uh, and it would be equal to live data which is gonna be a private property in the searcher but that one's gonna be a mutable one so I want to be able to mutate the live data but only internally here in the searcher and that's why I'm exposing live data so um, other um, whoever is using this class cannot um, manipulate it directly so um, let's see where we are uh, we cannot observe it this way um, because uh, the spy UI controller has to be some sort of um, lifecycle owner and essentially the activities or the fragments which are the available UI controllers on Android uh, they both are uh, type of lifecycle owners so that's what we are gonna try to mimic out here let's implement this function and it would return a lifecycle registry and that's gonna be a property here but I'll make this also a late init lifecycle registry and I would initialize it in, inside the onCreate so the lifecycle registry will be a lifecycle registry and then I have to set the current state of the lifecycle registry to be started is started um, pass it in this here yeah <coughs> so that's how I mimic out a UI controller actually um, a real one so in on create I know that I can already start observing some live data let's say and then finally 
this submit, we'll have to pass the query to the searcher as well. So we need something like searcher dot search query. Let's create that function here and leave it not implemented for now. Um, it might be wise when I when I start growing with acceptance tests to abstract away uh, the uh, the li lifecycle registry and the lifecycle owner and have have some type that I would derive here for um, for example uh, test UI controller let's say and then I can reuse it around uh, for the new UI tests for the new acceptance tests uh, but I'm not gonna do it now um, for this example here I think it's gonna be fine. Um, I prefer to have this one as a uh, variable like this. And now I think all the wiring should be fine. And let's run the test and see where we are. Um, okay, we have a problem with the, uh, with the main looper. Let's fix that. So here we are gonna do extend with um, instant task executor extension. Um, which is basically equivalent to the rules that we used to have in JUnit 4, uh, but this is JUnit 5, and if you, if you are not familiar with this concept, you can tap on the top right corner and see how you can set up JUnit 5 for, um, on Android. Okay, now let's run again, see where we are. Cool, so I think we are heating here. Um, as we can see, we have searcher.search, which is this to do here. So I think the, the wiring between the components is, is done. Um, so now let's go ahead and deal with the primitive obsession here, because we don't really want the rendering states to be strings. We need some, some better data, ta data type here. So something like, let's say, um, show loading, matching, results and then hide loading all right let's go ahead and create them um, so i'm gonna have some sort of search state type that will have that will wrap those uh, it's gonna be sort of sealed class so i'll have a show loading um, yeah extract into separate file let's say um, like this um, and then create an object inside there that will also be a search state and let's do the same for the hide loading search state hide loading Okay, it is not letting me do this automatically, but I'll do that manually. Right? And finally, let's create the matching results. Um, something like search state dot matching results. And then I'm gonna have some sort of matches here. And now this is important um, because I need some sort of relation between the query and the matches. So the matches, the, the, the items inside the matches will be items that would contain the query, the, the value of the query. Something like item one, uh, another item, and then item two, let's say. Um, and that's going to be the matching results. So something like a data class. And this is going to be a val. Yeah. And I think our uh, search state is complete. It looks fine to me. And now let's do update here the searcher to use the search 
date for the live data instead of string. All right. And um, here as well in the spy, we should use the search state instead. And just to make this a little bit better, I'm gonna move these two out here because um, I do believe that they're essentially constants and it's gonna be easy here to understand like show loading, matching results and hide loading. Um, it will be easier to read the test. Uh, would be nice if I can still improve this one here. I, yeah, to, to, to make, you know, uh, the test a little bit more concise, but I don't have much options here, I guess. Uh, so it's gonna be fine if I leave it as it is. Let's uh, run again. Um, I just have this habit of constantly running the test. <laughs> Okay, now I think again we are hitting here just to make to 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 just to double check. I'll just put some sort of value here, let's say head loading, and run to see that the assertion fails now. Exactly. So I'm expecting three events, I'm receiving one, and that's it. So I think uh, everything works as it should. Let's put back the to do. I think we are done for the uh, for the time being with the acceptance test, and it's gonna evolve over time uh, as we'll go, and we'll see how. And that's that's the point. That's the essence of the uh, outside in TDD. Um, now um, I think we are done with the acceptance with the acceptance test for this video. In the next one, we are gonna move. A level down and start working with the micro tests to um, evolve some design for the searcher uh, how that's going to collaborate with uh, with other uh, sort of collaborators and how, how it's going to communicate with them um, and as I said we are going to start working on that on the next video I think we are done for this one uh, so as a last step let's uh, check this in and uh, we have a search feature uh, acceptance test and let's wrap this up thank you very much for watching uh, looking forward to the um, feedback and please subscribe uh, and I'm gonna catch you in the next video bye